Welcome, welcome, welcome all. Welcome everyone to the 10th Avenue Church of Christ. Glad to have you tonight. This is a new month, February, Black History Month. Uh, we have 20, what day, what's the day, the third? Yeah, we have 25 days. Uh, so we'll make the most uh, of that in life, but we're uh, thankful if God says the same. But we're thankful tonight to be here, month of February. And guess what? This month is Sacrifice Month. This is Sacrifice Month. So we're excited uh, for this series and for this portion of our yearly series this year. And we're excited to answer the call to sacrifice. We're going to start that tonight. So share, 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 share with your friends, share with your family, share with those out there. Uh, and we're going to have a great time. Let's pray, get started. Let's jump right on in to this great series talking about sacrifice. Let's go. Father God. So thankful, thankful tonight, God, for uh, your blessings and all that you have done this week. We made it to the middle uh, of another work week. It is known as hump day. And we're just excited, God, that you have blessed us to be able to continue to have life, health and a reasonable portion of strength. We ask you, Father, tonight that you would bless this study. Bless us, O oh God, as we in endeavor to uh, seek your truths and to explain them in a simplistic manner to the world and to those who are listening abroad through all these different channels of social media. Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done. And we give you advanced praise for what you will do. This is now the prayer that we live. In the mighty, the awesome, and surely the majestic name of Jesus, let us together say, Amen and Amen. All right, all right, tonight... Uh, we start talking about sacrifice, talking about sacrifice, such a powerful word, powerful word, sacrifice. And you see the picture uh, that we have up here starting off uh, on tonight. We have a text and we're going to go to this text. First, Peter is going to be our, our, our pillar text uh, for tonight. We're not going to start there because I think it's important that I help you to know that sacrifice uh, is a part of Bible from beginning, and it's going to be to the day we die. Sacrifice. Sacrifice in one way, shape, or form. The first sacrifice. How many of you know when the first sacrifice was actually made in the Bible? First sacrifice made in the Garden of Eden happened when Adam and Eve had sinned against God. Ate of that tree, the serpent came in the garden, and uh, caused Eve, of course, to eat. Then Eve gave it to Adam, and they both ate of that tree uh, that God told them not to. And then what happened? Number one, they tried to cover themselves, right? They went and got some stuff, sold it to get, tried to cover themselves. First thing you and I need to know, we can't cover ourselves. Lord have mercy. First thing you need to get out of that, there's no way you can cover your own sin. So guess what? Something else had to die that they might be covered. That was God's first show, first sign that how he would save man because the innocent, Lord have mercy, the innocent had to die. Watch this. The innocent had to die to cover the nakedness of the guilty. I'm gonna say that one more time. The innocent had to die to cover the nakedness of the guilty. So I want you to know it started all the way. God's plan was already pre-shown pre to us in the Garden of Eden. Sacrifice, the first sacrifice. And from that on, we, all, we automatically know that sacrifice had to have been practiced. And we see that in Genesis chapter 4, they have two boys. And you know the story. You've been in Sunday school once or twice. You know the story of Cain and Abel. You have the oldest son, Cain, the younger son, Abel. And God commanded them to make a sacrifice. So we see sacrifice throughout the entire Bible, the word of God. And the huge theme, the huge theme is sacrifice, the sacrifice made before, but the ultimate sacrifice that would come. But there was something that God did, something that God did in the Old Testament in implementing this system of sacrifice. And it would bring to light what he would do even in the New Testament. So that's what I need to give you tonight. I need to make sure you understand it. So let's go to the book of Exodus. 
Let's go to the book of Exodus together. Uh, the book of Exodus, and that is chapter number chapter number 19. Uh, take notes, write this down, go back and look at it later at your study leisure. Exodus chapter number 19 and verse number 5 on the screen here uh, behind me if you're able to view it clearly. Uh, if not, uh, check your, your Bibles at home. But Exodus chapter number 19 in verse number 5. Watch God now as he talks to his people, Israel, uh, by way and through, of course, the man of God, the servant of God, Moses. Uh, but nonetheless, the Bible says, God speaking to Moses and having Moses to speak to the people. The Bible says, now, therefore, if ye will obey, first thing you, we got to do, first thing we're going to have to do is be obedient. God said, if you will obey my voice, indeed, Lord have mercy. That sounds familiar. Uh, Jesus said uh, in John 8, uh, if you continue in my word, then ye shall be my disciples indeed. <laughs> There's some people that say they belong to the Lord, right? But are you the indeed? Are you truly, truly belong to the Lord? Do you truly belong or you half and half like some of this coffee stuff? Uh, voice indeed, right? You're not coffee. You're the full thing. Voice indeed. Now watch this. And keep my covenant. Now we have the old covenant, uh, many different multiple covenants that we could talk about, but the main covenant of the old covenant of the old testament covenant made between israel and god they be his people in the covenant uh sanctified uh are uh, are uh, consecrated uh surely in exodus 24 by the blood we'll get to that later uh to keep my covenant to keep my commands my the agreement that we've made between each other then ye shall be look at here let's see if this sounds familiar it's not the first time you hear the type of language that you see here. Peculiar treasure. Lord have mercy. You are a treasure to God. And if God considers you a treasure, then you are a treasure. Uh, one, drop, one quick nugget I dropped right along in here is the fact that you are not what people say you are. Amen, somebody. You are not what people say you are. You are who God says you are. Stop living beneath your standard. Stop walking with your head down. You are not your past. You are not what you've been through. You are not where you've been. I come today to tell, tell you one great word. If God says you are a treasure, if God says you're precious, if God says you are his property, you belong to him, then you are important. Please understand that. Don't, don't, don't allow people's opinion of you devalue what God says you are. Very important to understand that. Now, peculiar treasure unto, watch this, unto me, Lord have mercy. This shows a dedication. We're going get, to get, get to it in a minute when we get to First Peter. This shows a dedication. God says, but you're unto me. You're not meant to be for anybody else. God says the covenant we have is you're supposed to be unto me, all right, above all people. Okay, because God, when you come to God, it is God who places you in a place you've never been. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to show you when you come to God, you're going to see the same lingual. And I'm going to show you this. It's, it's very interesting. When you come to God, God is the one who places you in a place only he can. God will elevate you. God places us in a place that man cannot do. So the Bible says unto me above all people. For all the earth, God says, I can do, I can do things because guess what? The entire earth is whose? Mine. <laughs> people need to, look here, look here. L listen to me real good. Because some people think when they come to God, we're going to talk about sacrifice, right? People think I got to give up everything and I don't have nothing. And I'm just, life is going to be over when I come to God. Look, God says, how can life be over when everything in the earth belongs to me? So, if I come to God, I'm coming to the person that has and owns everything. So let me ask you a question. How can you lose? Lord have mercy. How can you lose when you come to God when everything in the earth is his? You, look, you can't lose when you come to God. Let's just, I want you to be clear of that. 
You never lose when you come to God. Stop letting the devil lie to you and make you believe you're missing what actually is God's in this entire earth. Okay, everything belongs to God. Now, verse number six, listen to this. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Lord have mercy. Let's see if we hear that language again. A kingdom of priests. All right. And a what kind of nation? A holy. We're going to see if we see these words and we're going to break them down and just, just shortly. Holy nation, because that's a part of this sacrificial understanding. All right. We're studying sacrifice. You've been called to sacrifice. And as a Christian, it is our responsibility to answer the call. And remember I said something Sunday. Uh, God never asked you to do anything that he has not already done. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice, right? I think all of us would agree that the ultimate sacrifice was made by Jesus Christ. So there Jesus has made the ultimate sacrifice. He will never ask us to do something he has not already done. God, okay? So a holy nation... God said, these are the words, speaking to his man of God, to speak to the people, which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. Well, let's see. Let's see. Me and you, let's see if we hear that uh, again in further along in the word of God. So we're going to jump from Exodus, second book as it is categorized in the Bible, the canon of scripture, and go all the way to the last book of Revelations, chapter 1. And verse number five, what are you doing, preacher? I'm showing you and introducing to you God's desire. God's desire for Israel were to be a kingdom of priests. I want you to know that desire, God's mentality, his mindset hasn't changed. Even though he's closed one covenant, moved us into a better Hebrew writer, lets us know, with so much teaching in it, better covenant, better promises, better everything, okay? And one day we'll deal with that extensively in the book of Hebrews, showing the superiority of the new covenant. The Bible says in Revelation 1 and 5, and from Jesus Christ, which I had time to get that whole chapter 1 up until this point, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, and the first begotten, the first of his kind, the firstborn, uh, as, as we hear in other portions of the New Testament, the first begotten, the first of his kind of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. He's the head. He's the top. Unto him that loved us. Talking about Jesus. And washed us from our sin. Come here. Come here. When you come to God. Right. You answer the gospel call. Listen. God called Israel. What did he want them to be? Right. He said. First thing I want you to do. Obey me. Right. Obey me. So in obedience to us. Right. In obedience to the gospel, God is calling us, just like he did for them, into a covenant, right? He's calling us into a covenant. I need you to see this. He's calling you, them, he called them into a covenant through obedience to, to his will and to his way. He's calling us into this covenant. Of course, after that, of course, those through physical lineage were in the covenant because of the promise initially. But for us, we're born again into the new covenant. But nonetheless, unto him, this is how we come in it, you got to get washed in the blood. We've dealt with that in the beginning. You got to be washed. You meet the blood at the occasion of baptism according to New Testament teaching. So unto him that loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now watch this. And have made us. Oh my gosh. Listen. God made us to be something. He called us to a purpose. He called us to do something. He didn't just wash us just for us to be clean. I, I, want, I want you and I to understand something tonight. You've been called to answer a call of priesthood. And if you understand priesthood, if you understand it from the Old Testament figure to the New Testament reality, you understand that a priest we're going to get to it in a minute. First Peter, a priest was his, their whole service was about offering sacrifice unto God. And we're going to get to that even deeper when we get to Romans chapter 12 and other portions of scripture. 
of New Testament. First understanding the standard understanding that you and I who've been washed in the blood. Everybody excited about being washed in the blood? I'm excited. Everybody's excited about that, right? Because we wanted to get out of our sins. Because if we died in this state, we know we'd be lost. But also understand this. You haven't just been washed from your sins just to be clean. Some people get excited about being clean and don't understand this part. It's a beautiful thing, but it also comes with a responsibility. It also comes with a, an expectancy. Okay? God expects something from you. He expected something from the priests of the Old Testament. He expected something from the priesthood so much, it literally dedicated almost an entire book of Leviticus and much of even Deuteronomy. We talked about it of the priests, the sacrificial system. Okay? So, me and you need to understand, even though, of course, the system is different now, because the ultimate sacrifice for sin was already done and that's over, we still are priests. And we still have sacrifices to offer. Okay? But they are not physical of lamb, bulls, and goats. They are spiritual. Alright? We're going to get to that. Now, kings and priests unto God and his father. Thank God who made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory. Be glory because those who were sinners, we were wretched. We were in our sins. The Lord has put us on a level. Lord have mercy. He's put us on a level that we don't deserve. Thank God for that. So, you've been called to this beautiful priesthood. You've been called to this. There, and it's a mission. It's a covenant responsibility of the new covenant. You and I have been called to this. While it's beautiful, while it's, it's awesome to understand it, but I also want you to understand what a priest was called to be and to do. Okay? It's not... See, you just can't get excited about what God has named you or giving you the title to be. You must understand the responsibility that comes with that. And most Christians may not recognize the responsibility of your priesthood. We read 1 Peter and we get so excited and we should. We so enough should because that is outstandingly, it's awesome. It is absolutely beautiful that the Lord would render such type of awesome grace and mercy upon us who are unworthy. But I also want you to take account for the fact that as we are in this priesthood, that we are called to be priests. Not just that we are priests, but we are called to actively work in priesthood. All right, now let's let's deal with that. Let's go to the text, okay? Let's go to the text, First Peter, uh, chapter two. All right, powerful stuff. First Peter, chapter two. Peter, uh, of course, uh, is dealing with some powerful information here, uh, and I like how we're going to walk into this in verse four, and then get into verse five. Verse four, uh, Peter walks us into the mentality. Lord have mercy. Uh, I, I, I can't wait because I'm going to deal with I'm going to deal with a lot of this. Uh, the mentality of a priest, mm -hmm. the mentality of the priest when they came to offer, Lord have mercy. There was a mentality, understanding who you're sacrificing to, a spirit of humility, spirit of the one who's laying it on the altar, the one who's putting the sacrifice, offering the sacrifice. Uh, it, it's so much into it. We're going to deal with all of these things uh, here coming. To whom coming? That means our approach. We've been clean, right? Revelation 1. We've been washed. We've been clean. Because remember, Lord have mercy. If I had time, I would tell you uh, that in the Old Testament system of the priesthood, in the house of uh, the temple, uh, in, the, in, in the Jewish system, they, before they could even get the high priest, could go into the most holy place, he had to wash, I had a better picture, I tell you, he got to wash out of court, inner court, two different courts, but he would have to wash at the labor. He would have to clean himself before he went into the most holy place. I want you to know tonight that the blessing is we've already been washed in the blood of Jesus. And he had to offer sacrifice for himself 
before he went into the, I want you to understand that God has already, he's, we're going in, he's already offered the sacrifice for us. Matter of fact, Jesus came and the Holy Ghost, and he didn't need a sacrifice because guess what? He was the sacrifice. So in first Peter chapter two and verse four, when we look at me and you, look at me and you, we get to come already clean as, as priests, already clean. We washed at the labor of the occasion of baptism, already clean. We come now to a living stone. He's the foundation. He is that sure stone. Thank God for the foundation of Jesus Christ. All of us stand on him. We're built on him. It's because of him that the house is, can, was even established. He's that foundational stone. Isaiah 28, 16. Write that down. Go and look at it. He was disallowed, rejected indeed of men when he came. We've talked about that before. But chosen of God. Lord have mercy. It doesn't matter what, who rejects you if God chooses you. If God has selected you through your obedience to the gospel and you're the elect of God, it doesn't matter what people say about you. It's what God declares about you. Lord have mercy. And we, he is talking about God. He's precious. Okay? So if you understand that, if you understand that we're coming to the stone, here's your blessing. Because we're connected to this stone, we get a ye also. <laughs> yeah, thank God for the ye also. He's precious. What about me? He's the stone. What about us? Listen, when you're connected to the stones, there was an old saying we used to say back in the day, a chip off the old block. I, I want you to know you're a chip. Off that old block. Lord have mercy. That stone. That sure foundation. Thank God I'm a chip. Off the old block. As living stones. That in the Greek would be living stones. We are living. We're not dead. Some folk have come to God. And, and are, are, are they stones. But they, they're dead stones. <laughs> come in people of God. We're not meant to be dead stones. That's why we got to call. We got to answer the call. Church without walk. We're not meant to be dead stones. We're living. We're alive. Operating. Functioning in the will. The service. The sacrificial demands of priesthood. The work that God has called me and you to do. He didn't just wash us to make us clean just to be pretty. It's good that we're pretty. It's good that we're clean. No longer dirty in our sins. That's beautiful. But we've been clean to be lively or living Stones that should represent and resemble the foundational stone that we proceed from and are built up by the Lord, okay, growing strong, built up, not a physical temple like this one here, made of brick and mortar. Some folk have gotten caught up in the building of the brick and mortar. And this is what I want you to understand too as a child of God. Some of us come to the building and we come we have, a, we have this mentality. We People have gained this mentality. So the problem in the old... God of mine, listen, listen, people of God. Listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. The problem in the Old Testament, and even after Jesus died and the New Testament church was established, people stayed in Jerusalem. They stayed close to this place. They, stayed, they, they wouldn't leave Jerusalem. Even when the Lord told them to go, watch his miss, missions, mission, right? Message and mission. Go out into all the world, right? Jerusalem wasn't the only place in the world. There was over 17, over 17 nations, 17 nations on the day of Pentecost that were represented there that came to, of course, take in the festival of the Pentecost, of the Jewish feast. Men came from everywhere, right? So we knew as many other nations. So why did they stay there? You know why they stayed there? They became attached to brick and mortar. Listen to me. They became attached to brick and mortar. And without the brick and mortar, they felt inadequate. They got so sometimes you can do a thing so long, you you when God tells you you're something else, you you heard what he said, but you're not acting in what he said. Good God Almighty. God had to bring persecution on the church to make them act in who they were supposed to be. But look, listen, people of God, in this time, God would meet in the temple. 
God's presence was me in the in this place. God's presence would come. I want you to know, guess what? That's different now. Because I'm going to show you in a minute. We, as Christians, as priests, are the temple. Good God Almighty. We are a temple. So they didn't have to stay in Jerusalem because when they left Jerusalem, the temples left. Good God Almighty. They, see, they didn't have to stay close to the temple. What they didn't realize, they were the temple. Let me give an example. It's, it's almost like, let me, let me kind of make an application. It's this idea, some of you have heard it before, just uh, people talk and people say when they come to the building, because they're not coming to the church, uh, we are the temple uh, of the Spirit of God, the indwelling housing of the Spirit of God to be in the child of God, who's also the priest of God. We are the priest, the temple, and the sacrifice. Lord have mercy. I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to need y'all to understand this. We're the priest, the temple, and the sacrifice. Okay. Uh, 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 we, we have it all. We sacrifice out of the... I'm going to show you in a minute. Just, 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 just watch. Um, here's an example of that mentality I was about to tell you. The, the example is this. Have you ever heard people when you're at, you're at, at the building? I want to make sure I keep terminology uh, straight. We call it the church. I'm going to church. Really, you're going to the building. The church meets at the building. We assemble together as the church to offer worship and praise to God, right? So now that's that's proper terminology, but we've, we've got so accustomed. And what happens is when you begin to use building and church as synonymous things, they becomes they become the same thing in your mind. So this is the danger of that. You you attribute the church to the building. So when you leave the building, you separate yourself from church. Good God Almighty. I come there to tell you scripture is, is totally opposite in New Testament. The reality is you are the church. Uh, you are the temple. So guess what? If what you would not do on church grounds, you should never do because guess what? You are church ground. Everywhere you walk is church ground. Everywhere you walk is sanctified. Everywhere you walk is supposed to be consecrated. Everywhere you go is supposed to be set aside. You are the temple. You are the dwelling place of God. Listen to me, child of God. When you cuss and drink and do these things, you are defiling the temple. Because you are the temple of God, the dwelling place of the Spirit of God. When you do things that are outside of the will of God, you are defiling the temple. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get ahead of myself. But I just need y'all to understand the separation and how dangerous it may be. And, I, and most of us say, I know the difference, preacher. But sometimes we don't live like we know the difference. Lord have mercy. Amen. We don't always live like we know the difference. We should know how I live because I'm the temple is supposed to show the, uh, that God's spirit dwells in me. How many of us would come to the building? Watch this. Most of us have more. Watch this. Let me tell you how dangerous this is. Most of us have more respect for the building than we do for the temple. Okay, y'all miss it. Good God Almighty. Most of us have more respect for the building than we do for the actual temple. We will mistreat and do all kinds of things all week long in our temple and then come to the building and act righteous. Oh my gosh, this is scary. I need you to get this. I need you to understand the difference. I need you to move from this mentality. Church without walls. You are the, you are the walls. Wherever you go, the boundary of the church is goes with you because you are the temple. You are the temple. You are the temple of the Spirit of God. Oh my goodness. Okay, all right. Let, let's, let's, let me show you. Let's study. Let's keep, let's keep studying. Okay. Let's go back to this text. Let's go back to this text. Uh, built up a, he, he's trying to make, help them understand. Remember, right? Jewish people, uh, focus on them. Of course, they're Gentiles, but understand he's trying to help them understand. I know you got caught up in that old temple, right? The physical temple. He's trying to transition their mindset because just because you move somebody doesn't mean their mind moves with them. Okay, so Peter is trying to move their mentality. And that's what I'm trying to do tonight. I need you to move your mentality. You, you don't cuss when you go to work and act crazy when you go to work because you are the temple. Okay, so you treat this as if you're at worship all the time because I'm going to show you, you are a living worship place. Oh my gosh. I'm, we're going to get to it a little bit later. Gosh, you're a living worship sacrifice. You're a sacrifice. You're a priest. Okay, watch this. Spiritual house. Okay, 
That's who we are. The spiritual house. So we showed you the temple. Watch this. And holy. Let me get to preach. Holy. All right. Let, let's, 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 let's look at this. Holy. Preacher, what does that mean? All right. Two things you understand uh, about holy. And number one. Okay. Come here real, real quick. Real quick. Holy. Separated from sin. Okay. You have the idea of holy in purity, and then you have the word sanctified. Okay. Uh, sistering, uh, depending on the Greek word, uh, it, it, you can get to the idea in the, uh, the Greek word in the, in, the, in the context, of course, that it's used in. Uh, but you have the idea of holy, pure, consecrated. And then it also deals with the idea of the sanctification. Okay, uh, sanctified, and you, we get that as well in 1 Corinthians 6, uh, in different places, and we'll, we'll get to that. But listen to this. Separated from sin. All right, let, 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 let me help, help, help you understand something. In the Old Testament, when we go to the priesthood of the Old Testament, which we've already showed you, Exodus 19, right? Revelation chapter 1. You see priesthood, right? Both, both places. One it was the physical priesthood, another is the spiritual. Okay? Physical sacrifices in the Old Testament, spiritual, we're going to get to it in just a second, right? So we see the, what God was doing, showing us a figure in the Old Testament, right? Laid side by side, showing us a pre type, a type of, and then you have the anti type, or not a type, but the real thing in the New Testament, which is the spiritual priesthood. Okay? Now, what I need you to understand is there are some. Things you need to gravitate from that old way of the priesthood then. Because when Jesus, when the Lord in the Old Testament called the Levitical priesthood, the sons of Aaron, the Levitical priesthood to do his service, he called them from among the people. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I need y'all to get this. I need y'all to get this. I, if, you, if you're going to be able to do God's, if you're going to be able to work in the office of the priesthood, understand, that's why John, look at this, you are in the world, but not of. I need you to understand that you have to know, in order to be a spiritual priesthood, to offer the things I'm about to talk about, to be holy, you need to understand that you have you are separated from the indulging of sin. Okay? You're separated because I can't offer to God. Lord, I'm, I'm about to get to this. I can't offer to God a, a, and I'm dirty because God's not going to accept it. Okay, God, watch this. The reason why God would not many times accept Israel's sacrifice because they had been disobedient. And God was saying, you want to offer me stuff, but then live, live a disobedient life. And God says, you need to understand that the obedience goes with the sacrifice. Meaning, God says obedience is better than sacrifice. The idea, I want you to understand that God did not want none of Israel's sacrifice. And that's the real context of the text that we talk about. When God says, remove away from me uh, the, 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 the songs and the noise. He's really dealing with the fact that they had been hypocritical. They had not obeyed his will and way and had done these things amiss. And God says, I don't want to hear none of your stuff anymore because you're not living appropriately. But then you want to come to my house and offer sacrifice like everything okay. Let me let me let me make it clear. Let me make it clear. Uh, we want to pray. Uh, we want to come to the building on the day of assembling of the church in holistic worship uh, together as a body, as a local body of congregation to worship to God. We want to come on that day and just offer anything. But all day of the week, we have not been worshipers and sacrificing lives of obedience. Part of our sacrifice, we'll get to it later. Uh, and haven't been doing that and think that God's going to take the first day of the week worship serious when he's seen us 
all week long, be disobedient, but then we want to offer and think we have a clean offering and acceptable offering before our God. Okay? I need you to understand that that's not how that works. The idea of the labor on the outside was there physically to explain a spiritual reality that God doesn't want nothing from us from dirty hands. That's why the idea in the Old Testament got clean hands, pure heart. If worship is going to be acceptable to God, clean hands, the idea of clean hands was clean from sin, pure heart, sincerity, and devotion sanctified toward God. Okay? All right, now, I need to... I need to I, I need to get this holy. We got to get this holy here because I, I need you to see a couple things about what I just said. Okay, so consecrated. I want I want to define this word before I go to a couple couple verses on tonight. Okay, consecrated, consecrated. Uh, by definition, for those who are listening, taking notes, uh, and doing that, I maybe go back and say, preach. I'll look at it again. I just want to be focused and study while I listen to you right now. And take notes. I can't listen and take notes at the same time. I go back and do it later. But the word consecrated, the idea of being consecrated is uh, to declare, to make or declare something sacred, to set apart and dedicate to the service of God. To devote or dedicate your purpose to God. Okay. You declare. If God says you're holy, what that means is you're consecrated. Meaning God is setting you apart and he's saying you are now dedicated. Lord have mercy. Woo. Some people get excited over the priesthood. Stay excited. Stay excited because it's real. Stay excited because everybody can't offer to God. Everybody can't, everybody can't do what we can do. Everybody don't have the accessibility of a priest. All right? Everybody can't just pray to God in the middle of the night. Everybody can't pray to God. Some people can't pray to God no time as far as God being uh, appre uh, uh, returning and responding in power to their prayer because of their placement in their not having relationship with the Lord, not having that priesthood relationship as being a priest. That is connected to the high priest who is the mediator on our behalf before God. So people don't have that connection, but we do. Okay. But with that, all right, with that great blessing, which it is, we also need to understand that the responsibility that comes with that to maintain the flow of that relationship, to maintain the health of that blessing that we so, uh, so greatly appreciate, right? What do, I need, what do I need to understand about it, preacher? You're consecrated. You are set aside for the dedication. Okay, let me give an example. Um, I used this before uh, one time when I was preaching, uh, but I, I remember growing up, uh, my mother, uh, with, 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 she loved old school furniture. She loved real wood stuff. You know, the stuff that hurts your back uh, when you try to move. I, I still remember the day. I think they still have this thing. Old record player. Lord, I mean, some of y'all don't even know what a record player is, but an old record player. I mean, I remember, uh, I, I, yeah, that, that, that old record player. I won't go too far. <laughs> wood, real wood. And I also remember my mother having this big china cabinet. And, and I remember in that china cabinet, for those who know what it is, there were special dishes in there. Now, those dishes were not used for anything and everything. Uh, you didn't just go in there and grab a plate. You went to the kitchen in the cabinet and grabbed the regular plates. But on special occasions, mom would open up that china cabinet. Lord have mercy. Because, watch this, those dishes were consecrated, dedicated for a purpose and for a reason. Come here, somebody. I come today to tell you, you are God's special people. You are God's peculiar people. You are the dedicated china. God says, when I pull you out, I pull you out for a purpose. I pulled you out of the world, placed you in the cabinet, and every time you come out the cabinet, every time you approach the world, 
Every time people come in contact with you, they ought to know this is a special moment. They ought to realize that this ain't a normal time. They ought to realize when they talk to you, there's something different about you. When they could get connected to you, there's something different about you because you're not regular plates. You're not, and it doesn't mean you think you're better than anybody. It's just because of who you are and how you allow God's spirit to work in you and through you, you exhibit the power of God and the righteousness of God in your life. Okay, now, consecrate. Okay, let's look. Leviticus, let's get a couple scriptures real quickly because time is going to catch us. Okay, Leviticus, Leviticus, uh, this is Leviticus uh, here. Lord have mercy, wish I had time. Uh, Leviticus, let me go back. Leviticus chapter number uh, one. Let's go there. Let's go there. Leviticus chapter 1. Then I'll go to Leviticus 22. But Leviticus chapter 1. Let's go to Leviticus 1 first. Then we go to 22, 18, and 19. Leviticus chapter 1. All right. Remember I told you about the priesthood? Remember I told you about the Levitical, the Levi, the priesthood uh, that God put in motion in motion in the Old Testament. Okay. Now, I want you to understand some things about this. And on Sunday, we're going to... Oh, my gosh. There's a chapter. I can't even tell you because... I'm already excited about it, but uh, powerful stuff about sacrifice. But Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1, Genesis, e Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, first five books. Uh, but Leviticus 1, verse 1, the Bible says, And the Lord called unto Moses, listen, and spake, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them, if any man of you bring an offering. Here's the first thing, right? Because remember, if we bring something, who are we bringing it to? Right? That, that take, like, like, it's one thing if I give a gift to my brother or to my friend. But how I present it, <laughs> the mentality of how I offer this is going to be different. Than anybody else, right? Because of who I'm offering it to. So the Lord says, if any man, listen how God feels. If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, of the herd, and of the flock. Watch this. If his offering be a burnt, up, burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him Offer a male, watch this, without blemish. God said, if you're going to give me something. Now, this is reflective, of course, Jesus Christ. He had no sin. He had no blemish. He was perfect, right? All right. Also understand, if you're going to give God something. Oh, we're going to get into this over there. If you're, going, if you're going to offer God something, listen to me, people of God. Understand that what I'm going to give God, I'm not going to give God nothing half way. If I'm going to if I'm going to offer to God I'm going to offer to him the best. I, and see I, I'm going to deal with the idea of sacrifice. Oh my gosh. If if it's not the best, I dare not even bring it into his presence. I dare not even insult his holiness. I dare not even insult him as God. I, I dare not even make that mistake because as a priest, number one, I understand and am in relationship and covenant agreement with him and I understand who he is. So my approach as, and let me tell you, when, when the priest, priest messed up, I'm going to show you when they offered something crazy, God acted out. So be careful. We're going to show you examples of that. Uh, but listen, I, I want us to know our mentality of how we approach God has to be intact. Not only that, God also, watch the second part, he shall offer it of his own voluntary. Listen to me, listen to me. God is never going to make you do anything. God wants you to do it because you want to do it. This is free. See, this is why Christianity is not popular. Let me tell you why work. People are more dedicated, consecrated, dedication, right? Dedication to a thing. Let me tell you why people are more dedicated 
to work than they could be to priesthood. Or uh, many times would be to priesthood. You know why? Work, when I work my two weeks, twice a month, whatever it is, every Friday, I know on that Friday, every two weeks, once a month, whatever it is, even if you're retired, you know that that money's coming. You know. So your dedication to being on time, it's just, it's just to think about it, right? Let's just be honest. The human dedication to being on time, to being obedient to our superiors. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to everything we do within a career and within a job or workplace is because of those understandings. And we know we have responsibilities, right, within our homes, within our lives. So by human recognition, and the here now physical understanding, we will be on time. We will be committed to going to work even when we don't feel like it. Even when we're sick. Even when we don't want to be there. Even when we're murmuring about it, right? Right? Even when we, 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 we're struggling with our supervisors and our boss. Guess what? We're going to be there because the car note doesn't pay itself. The lights don't pay themselves. The rent, a mortgage doesn't pay itself. Gas is not free and it keep going up, especially in Gainesville. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, milk ain't free. Children not, no, ain't nothing with children free. Uh, they keep growing, don't stop growing, won't stop growing. Uh, everything, it has a cost attached to it, right? And because we understand that, we work and are committed to our work accordingly. Now, here's the problem. But when we transition from the carnal understanding of that, right? And we move to a spiritual where God makes it, watch this, voluntary. <laughs> How many people? What, what, okay, come here. Let me just, let's just do this, right? Let's, let's just do this. Let's just do this, right? Let's just do this. How many people would voluntarily wake up every morning just to go to work? If it had nothing to do with paying your bills, if it helped you with not at all, how many of you would still get out of your bed every single morning and do the same thing every single day and deal with some of the craziness you deal with every single day? I mean, if, 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 if you, I'm not going to say you go play the lotto because, hey, man, yeah, but if you just say somebody just bless you with the money, right? Somebody bless you with some money, you get you some money, right? And somebody just blesses you with money, and you didn't have to go to work. You would say, I'm done with that job. I'm gonna go do all the things I wish I could have did when I, I was stuck to the responsibility of having to do it, right? Now watch this, watch this, right? But with the Lord, because it's voluntary, there has to be something. Within you, Lord have mercy. This is why. This is why. This is why we have a problem in Christianity. This is why you have a problem, and when it comes to religion, this is why you have a problem because it's voluntary. Now, because of that, people take it lightly because there's no immediate. Listen to my. Listen to my wording. There's no immediate ramification. No immediate in our mentality, in our mindset. There's no immediate something gonna happen to me. I'm gonna lose my check. I don't have enough. I don't have enough leave, right? I, if we're not committed to the same extent to God. But now here's here is the awesome thing about voluntary though. On the opposite side, listen. This is what makes voluntary special, right? It's like, because voluntary is connected to relationship. Okay, what do you mean, preacher? All right. Voluntary connected to relationship. Because you don't have to be with somebody. You don't have to. It is violent. I, you're there because you want to be there. Oh, this is what God wants. Oh, my gosh. What does God want? 
from the beginning to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. What does God want? He wants voluntary. He wants love. God wants to know that you're willing to give it all up. You're willing to sacrifice it freely, not of, of, of demand just because it say, said it. This is what got caught up in the Old Testament. They were operating according to command and they left out love. Jesus turns around and says, if you love me, then keep my commandment. I don't want you just to keep, just to give this way, just to do it because I said it. I want to know that you're doing it because you love me. I want to know you sacrifice what you do because you do it freely. I don't want robots. I don't want people that's doing it because they're just scared of me. I want people that do it out of a place of love. Of love. That's what he wants. Free will. It's voluntary. You have to want God. And that's where, even as a preacher, I had to learn that the reality is, it's voluntary. I can tell you the blessings of it. I can tell you the ultimate result. If you don't make the right voluntary decision, I can do all At the end of the day, here's the reality for all of us. It's voluntary. It's not going to make it. And you literally have to want it. Okay? You have to want it. Now, listen to me. Lord have mercy. Tie us about up. Let's go now. Let's go now to listen to this. He says, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons and to all the sons of Aaron, those God dedicated of the priesthood. And to all the children of Israel, and say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel, of the strangers in Israel, that he will offer his oblation. Gosh, I want time. For all his vow. Oh, gosh. Your vows. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm coming back. I, it's 750. I have to go. And for all his, what? Free will offerings, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering. Ye shall offer at your what? Own will. Are y'all seeing God? I, this is some things about own will. Now, there's some things that they had to do, of course, and the priesthood had to do. Morning, day, the certain offerings and then that do the day of atonement would get all that. But the blemishing of the, the beings of the sheep, of the goats, but whatsoever have blemish, don't you offer it. Don't them offer that. It needs to be. Needs to be clean. Now, I'm going to close with this. and I'm, we'll, we'll get into it next week because I don't have time when I think of the idea of spiritual sacrifices. Okay? I, I want you to understand. I want you to understand that we talk about spiritual sacrifices. We talk about spiritual sacrifice. I need you to understand that God, God, the Lord, the Lord has has a desire, right? God has a desire of the spiritual sacrifices. God has a desire for me and for you to offer him spiritual sacrifices. Okay. The danger, the idea of those who offer the sacrifices it would think it was okay to offer God anything is because of the mentality of the offerer. The only way to get the offerer to understand what, how, and the way they ought to offer is if you place something in him that would lead God control and change his mind. So he would know how and what to offer. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm saying to you tonight that the Lord in the new covenant calling us to this priesthood placed within the Christian the spirit of God to cause him to become a great priest. And through the spirit who should live, reign, and abide, and lead us, 
will lead us in the paths of being a living spiritual sacrifice offerer priest holy consecrated dedicated to the will and the way of the Lord that's how God works this thing because within ourselves we cannot be what God would have wanted us to be but now as this new priesthood with the spirit of God we're going to get to that dwelling in us then we can be that great priesthood of God now Thank you so much tonight. We have much more, much more, much more to give you, much more to talk about. Uh, Sunday, we will get more in depth within sacrifice and the idea of sacrifice and continue to do that throughout this entire, entire month, this great month, uh, the, the, the powerful work of sacrifice. Powerful word. Stay with us. Don't leave us. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, time is up. We're going to close out on tonight. And we're going to uh, give you way and thank you for being with us tonight. If you're not a Christian, uh, the only way you become a child of God is because of the ultimate sacrifice. And that ultimate sacrifice, obviously, is Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ. He's the ultimate sacrifice for me and your sins. And because of his sacrifice at Calvary, coming to die for us in our place, me and you have an opportunity to get in contact with eternal life, to be washed, right? The king can wash us and we become a kingdom of priests. What a blessing, right? When you get washed in the blood, talk about it at the beginning of the lesson, washed in the blood of Jesus, you become that priesthood. And the blessing is you come in contact with that after you hear that gospel, you believe that message we just talked about. Good news is good news because he did it for us. Believe that with all of your heart. Ready to make that change, changing your mind, turning away from a life of sin, turning to God making the beautiful and great confession, openly acknowledging that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Go down in the occasion of baptism by through your faith, believing in what God promises at the occasion of baptism. Because of your faith, the Lord will operate on you, Colossians 2, 11 through 13. He'll cut away the sins of the flesh. You'll be washed in his blood, Acts 2, 38. And you'll be clean from your sins and he'll add you to his body, the church of Christ, you be faithful, live with him, work in the work of a priest, and give God the sacrifice of your life. We're going to get to that more deeply and show you what that really means. We're going to talk about the multiple levels of sacrifice. And the one day, all of your sacrifice will pay off. Will pay off. God bless you. God, thank you. We'll see you next time if God says the same. Let's close out with a word of prayer. Let's together pray. Father God, we thank you so much tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to just to study your word. Uh, we realize and recognize, God, the only reason we have this opportunity is because of your son Jesus and his goodness, grace, and his mercy. Pray for oh God on tonight that you continue to keep us, watch over us, God, and protect us as you have always done and continue to do uh, because of the great promise that you have made within your word to be with us always as you were with your men serving, oh God, in that day, uh, your great apostles, and we know, God, that promise extends to us even now. For, God, we are your children, and you are our Father, and you will never leave us nor forsake us. And, God, with that, we are confident and stand confident on your word and your truth. And this is the prayer now that we prepare to lift and lay at the foot of Jesus. And in that name, we so truly pray, let us together say, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you next time right here. Sacrifice. God bless you. Thank you.